All right, there's highlights coming from Channels International Kids Club. There's some good goals we saw during the break. Okay, now let's talk about this one. The FIFA Women's World Cup is 38 days to go, and some sport journalists and the sports editors have been talking about how Falcons we fare. Now, Ty, we've talked about this one. I mean, the, the chances of the Super Falcons knowing that everyone has been saying they've had the best of preparations in the long while, in 29 years or whatever, since the FIFA it's Women's well World Cup started well documented and mm. all that. Apart from the 1999 state, you know, there was this uh, progression. You know, have the players been together for a while, the coach and all that. This one, having a new coach, world-class coach, you know, uh, who has been to the World Cup before, mm. Sweden, and of course you have a, some of our players playing at top clubs top in Europe. Clubs. Top clubs. in top Europe. Clubs. And uh, they're regular in their clubs. We don't have bench women and all that. But then the pressure actually is on these girls right now. And I don't want, to, I don't want people to actually put so much pressure on them. Let us, let us just go enjoy themselves and see what happens. Ah, I, don't, I don't know what you mean by you don't want people to put pressure on them. That's what the game is about. That's what sport is about. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of expectations. Yeah. Uh, you know, especially when you're representing a football mm -hmm. uh, mad country. You know, I'm saying that in a good way, like Nigeria. Absolutely. You know, so they're, they're going to have to learn how to deal with the pressure. Uh, someone like Asado Shola, I imagine she's used to it by now. Um, Francisca Odega, certainly she's used to pressure by now. I mean, even the manager himself is used to pressure. He's been at the top level for a very long time. So I think pressure is going to be the least of their worries going into this World Cup. The, the, most, uh, the, the most obvious um, you know, um, problem for them yeah. is their opponents. Yeah. It's the fact that they're playing against some really, really, really top, top side. Group. Um, Norway, France, and Korea. I mean, uh, we've talked about that over and over again. It's starting to sound like a broken record now, but it is what it is. They're going to have to raise their game really, really, really high uh, to, you know, get points off those things. Yeah, don't you think the coach actually started the pressure? So when he talked about the fact that they want to be the best Nigerian team ever. I mean, you being the best Nigerian team ever simply means the class of 1999, you have to... I like that, that kind of talk. I like that kind of talk. You've got to embrace the pressure. That's what the coach is doing. So it's not, it's not left with the players. So you're trying to embrace that pressure and don't let it break them. And um, you know, that's a testament uh, of, of, a, of, a, of a top professional. You don't allow... So what is pressure? There's a lot more serious <laughs> things, you know, out there that can actually weigh you down. So I'm looking forward to a great tournament uh, from uh, from the ladies, and uh, they're gonna have to take it one game at a time. Absolutely. Unfortunately, they're playing France first. Yeah. I would have loved um, France, France to be the, be last, the last game. You know, I've had the point now that they need you know, whatever <laughs> happens, it to be easy. Well, let's uh, listen to some uh, sports editors mm. talking about it for four cons. What their performances will be. Some of them are optimistic, while the others are just saying, let me not just go anywhere. You guys are ready, but what I find uh, very, very difficult to understand is leadership. Yeah, I'm still looking for a leader, someone that can carry that team. You know, if I take out Aziza Noshuala, um, I take out U.S., the other young woman, uh, Jibade is too young, still learning the ropes as far as I'm concerned. Uh, how much of experience is she going to get? She just left the country not long ago to play professional football. Uh, do we have a team that can get to the semi-final of the World Cup? It's a big question. I, I want to commend the NFL. They've done so well, giving them what they need, I mean, in terms of preparations. But would that be good enough for us to go all the way? Um, I don't think we should be going to the World Cup or the Nations Cup or whatever to just be, you know, part of the teams that went there. This is about time we, we go to big tournaments and that we do, we show that we're the giant of African football. It will be very difficult, very, very difficult. Denabi struggled at the African Cup of Nations, um, the, the, the African Women Cup, uh, Cup of Nations. Nigeria struggled for the very first time. We struggled in Cameroon, we won, but now we're seeing the Super Falcons struggling the more. We need to go out there and, of course, uh, go past what we have always been getting through. It's not always easy for the Super Falcons. And I don't think uh, they can do any magic because it's the same players. We need to do something extra to surpass whatever we have achieved at the World Cup level before. And I do not think personally that the Super Falcons can go beyond where they've been before. The other the other advantage that we are going to do well this time around also is the category of clubs our players are playing in. We have a player in, in, in Barcelona women's team. We have players that are moved from the U.S. following the act of women's world-class women's football across the world. 
moving from the U.S. to China. And this, this class, we have the class of Franc Francesca Odega. We have a player as well, playing good football, regular football in Europe. And these are the players we're going to feature at the World Cup. So that tells you that by the time we are playing our matches in the World Cup, the players, our players, and our opponents will be at par. So the difference will not be much. The difference will not be much. And when you are there, when you are playing the World Cup, you have to take your chances. When we take our chances, we score our goals, we hold on to it. 90 minutes, the game is over. And the triumph, the victory is, you know, comes to Nigeria. Yeah, I love the optimism there, you know. Well, uh, Rap Chidizu was just being, you know, uh, being practical. If it was 1999, it was really great. But can they go past the quarterfinals? Mm, it's going to be difficult for him. But then you have uh, Dark Boy. You understandably, because he's been involved in women's game for like 29 years now. Yeah, it's mm. been a while. So he understands it very well. So he's really confident in saying, okay, these girls can. I mean, we have all our players playing across the world and everything. They're good. Then we have a world-class coach and all that. And the leadership, uh, God, you're not going to talk about. Mm. There's no lead. I mean, uh, I said that Cesar is not really like only one. So you need like two, three more. Well, well, I don't know, but you have Anime, 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 Leadership, I'm thinking maybe leader. strike force. That's what he's talking about. Not from the back. Not like a uh, captain or something. Maybe those that you can rely on to deliver, you know, at a crucial time. Mm. Like uh, having a Cristiano Ronaldo in your team, for instance, you know, okay, he is a game winner. Yeah, but that's supposed to be Asa the Shola. She's Nigeria's, yeah. uh, you know, biggest star. Just one. You can have three or four. Francisco Odega is there as well. Exactly. So she's sitting Zero ground running uh, in her. China. She's scoring mm -hmm. goals like she's going out of fashion and stuff. So I don't think that's the problem. I don't okay. think, uh, uh, you know, the talent, the score, goal scoring talent is a problem. Of course, they will have to bring their game uh, on on match day. Uh, but back to that ball. Um, you know, back to Ralph. Uh, Ralph's talked about um, it's going to be very difficult so fast. Uh, the 1999 set. Uh, that was a star spotted mm -hmm. uh, 1999 set. Uh, those players, uh, they lost narrowly to Brazil. Mm -hmm. I remember that one very vividly. Uh, Inkiro Kosine was in target. Inke Chigbe was in target. Priska and Milfus, uh, she was in target as well. So somehow they lost an experience. Yeah. It reminded me of what happened in 1994 for the Super Eagles as yes. well, too, because they could have really, you know, gone into the semi final. That's mm -hmm. in the past now. Now, uh, it's when it's. Present. It Present, <laughs> I, I tend to agree with Ralph. Ralph, okay. It's going to be very difficult. <laughs> That's why I said it the other time when we had this conversation that I'm just going to take it one game at a time. First of all, let them come out of that group. Mm -hmm. If they've done that, then we can start moving. Anything is a bonus. Anything is a bonus. Fantastic. Mm, that's that's what it. I think because that group is tricky. Not just tricky, it's difficult because these are uh, players or rather countries, you know, when it comes to women's football, Serious they've been there a long time, countries. you know, uh, had a perennial contenders, yeah. and all, you even have winners there, so it's going to be a very, very, imagine playing Norway, Korea, and France, first I mean, nation. They don't come <laughs> harder than that. <laughs> That's the most difficult group you can ever be, especially at the World Cup, where you feel you've had the best, you've had the best of preparations, you have the best of players, you've had, you have a good coach and everything, technical bench, it's okay, it's cool, but then how far can you go? when it comes to situations like this. You guys can talk to us on Twitter mm. and tell us what you think. How far can the Super Falcons go at the World Cup? We're doing the countdown 20, 38 days to go you know, for the FIFA Women's World Cup to start in France. And, of course, for you guys, just mm. tell us what you think. I mean, you've heard from the editors. These are guys that have been following football for a long time. They understand the games very well, and they're a bit uh, divided in their opinion and order mm. concerning the Super Falcons. Who is going to, you know, be that uh, girl or talisman. lady, talisman, really, uh, that will, talisman. you know, make it, make a difference, you know, at the World Cup. There's so many. So many. I There's mean, so no many. One, we have great players, <laughs> but the other teams have great players as well. That's it. So that's where, <laughs> so, that's where the issue is. But, you know, I mean, you know, in sports, Cecilia, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Impossible is nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the players and the coach all need to go into that tournament Absolutely. believing that they can do the impossible. Okay. That's where we'll leave it for now. Fingers crossed, wait right. and see. Okay, now let's talk about this one, the FA Cup. I mean, yeah. uh, the weekend, because of that, matches, MPFL games were postponed and all that because they wanted all the states to have your representative ready mm. for the ITO FA Cup. But then at the end of the day, what happened? Lagos, for instance, MFM, ow. I mean, mm. just take a, a look lot at it. A lot of shock. Go around, Hatland, Ifan Yuba, Remo Stars, Bayesa United. It failed to pick a ticket in the state. Mm. I'm not surprised. This, that's what—that's the magic of the FA Cup. Yeah. 
It's the same thing everywhere else in the world. England, uh, that's where you see the giant killers all, mm -hmm. you know, rubbing shoulders with the big guns and trying to tell them, yeah. And it's a knockout, uh, you know. So um, I'm not surprised. Actually, I'm surprised MFM uh, have not made it uh, from Lagos. Uh, that's quite surprising. Goran as well, still couldn't make it from Rivers. Uh, Hotland FC, these are all big and, you know, um, Solid size in the MPFL, so right. not making it as a shocker. But then that's why I like that's why we like cup uh, competitions. It gives uh, uh, opportunities to, to these small teams, uh, you know, to knock out the big guns. Uh, Absolutely, that's the way it is. And the lovely drama, the good thing is Enugu Rangers. Yeah, mm. they're still there. I just want that drama of what happened last uh. night. <laughs> <laughs> that final, oh, the what final, a final that fantastic was. finals. All right, let's Rangers. leave uh, the FA Cup and the shocker and those teams what that cannot make it to. The level we know how much has been put into this I main his big is usually something most teams aspire to mm -hmm. but those are kind of make it better luck next time of course talk yeah. about the champions league now we'll have a guest uh that will be joining us a tottenham fan martin akboveta he'll be joining us uh from london talking to us about the game okay right he's ready he's i mean ready. let's just get straight to him before we look at the fixtures for today good morning it's good to have you here hey, good morning how are you doing Fantastic. Now, Fantastic. today is the D-Day. Uh, uh, Mauricio Pochettino have been talking about, you know, dreaming. I mean, when you aspire, you dream about things. You go around, walking around and see how you can achieve it. Tonight against Ayers, they have actually removed the likes of Juve. And, of course, know what they did to Real Madrid. Can Tottenham really get something out of the games in the first leg? Uh, definitely we can. I think you have to look back, and I, I believe teams like Juve and Real Madrid... What they did, they underestimated Ajax. Mm. And Spurs are not going to do that. Tottenham are definitely not going to do that. You know, with the likes of our new stadium, the energy, the, basically the stadium is going to be electric tonight. You mm. know, and Ajax, Ajax are actually going to, <laughs> they're going to be shocked. You know, and you know, with football, you never can say never. Yes. You know, but, you know, it's, you, you look at the, the, the path to where we've actually got to the semi final. Mm. You know, who, who would have said that would have knocked a Man City? Mm. No one gave, no one gave us a chance. I did. You know, what did you do? Huh? You, you, you did. I did. <laughs> 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 I definitely thought Tottenham. I thought they had a very good chance, a good shout against um, uh, Manchester City. So I was, I was a bit happy uh, when yeah. VAR helped you guys get into uh, the semi-finals. Uh, let's get serious now. Uh, there's no hurricane. Is injured. We all know that. But well, the guy that normally steps in for Harry Kane, human son, fantastic player, is out suspended. So, I know. who would I you know. like to see uh, step in uh, for Spurs tonight against uh, Hayek? You know, the, the thing about Tottenham is like, we, we know one player team. So, it's a team effort. It's like right. the energy in the team, the desire in the team. What the manager has done to that team, regardless of whoever steps in, mm. you know, it's like we play as a team. We play as a unit. You know, like Harry Kane wasn't playing. Everyone said, oh, the Spurs season is over. Mm. Son came in. He did well. Okay, Son is out injured now. So everyone's thinking, what's going to happen? We've got Mora. Well, we got Lorentes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but like, it's, to me, it doesn't really matter if Son is out. I, just, I believe in the team, you know, and that's the most important thing for us. Okay, that's most important. Now, let's take a look at this IS team. Everyone, I've been talking about how young they are. How the fact that they can actually run for 190 minutes, not getting tired. Average age of 20, 24 years and 257 days. Can Tottenham, you know, we mentioned um, Harry Kane and some of the players that would not be available for this game. Can they keep up the pace with them? <laughs> Knowing that, usually they lose the first leg, but they go ahead and, of course, the second leg, you can't rule it out anymore. Yeah, well, you're right in terms of, like, um, they are one of the youngest um, sides. But if you look at Spurs as well, like, we also have, like, a young side, right? Be it, like, um, Loris is 30 and um, Vitongian is in the 30s as well. But <laughs> remember, we've got, like, four ex-IS players for us as well. Right. For us. So, so I think the energy doesn't really matter because we are an energetic side as well. The way we play, we play a pressing game, you know, so that's not going to bother us whatsoever. Exactly. And I think, the, the, as they say, the 12th man, that's the, the fans. The fans. <laughs> we give those players that extra incentive, that extra energy, mm. and they need to do it. And so we, we're going to do it. It doesn't matter. They could, they could run all they want to run and run and run and run, but the bottom line is like putting the ball in the back of the net, isn't it? Yeah, you're spot, you're spot on, Martin. Um, let's talk about, you've, talk, you've mentioned, talked about the fans a lot. 
And um, while Ajax were getting ready uh, for this match, you no know, matches played in, in the Netherlands, uh, Spurs were busy losing to West Ham right there at the new stadium. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. I knew someone was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't, you feel about it, it's like everyone loses, right? You know, right. Uh, Man City lost in their, new st in their stadium as well. You know, um, Arsenal have lost in their stadium. Everyone loses in their stadium. So True. it doesn't matter. It's not, it's, it's not like um, what's it called? What we did is a taboo, right? Yeah, uh, but what, what I'm trying to say is, like, do you think that's going to have any, like, like a negative impact oh, no, uh, on no, this performance no. tonight? Not so ever. You know, to me, though, though you don't want to lose games, but... The fact that we lost, right? I think it just gives the player that extra boost now. Mm. You know, the managers got to make sure that, like, you know what, the players understand. Mm. You know, we, we're not going to take it for granted. We're not going to take this Ajax side lightly. Right. You know, so definitely the fans are going to be off for it. It's, the stadium is going to be deafening. Mm. It's going to be deafening. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be there with my, with my loud voice as well tonight. So, like, it's, it's, it's going to be electric. I'm like, that's what we need. Mm. You know, we, we're going to do it. We're definitely going to do it. Of course, uh, support definitely will not be lacking uh, for the players. Uh, today, you guys and uh, sports are making uh, the first appearance in the semi-final for the first time since 1962. They're trying to get to the first ever final. For you, it's just the first leg, I know. What would be the ideal scoreline uh, for tonight's game? I think, um, ideally, first of all, we don't want to consider a goal. Right. Uh, that's the most important thing. And we, we score. So, ideal scoreline, you know, one nil. Because one we nail. Against, well, at least we showed against Man City that one nail still takes us through, right? Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's like it's it's gonna be it's it's difficult to predict, you know, the scoreline or what's gonna happen. But I know it's a tie, right? It's a two-leg tie, you know. Mm. So regardless of whatever happens tonight, we're gonna go through. Mm. <laughs> we are gonna go through, you know. And and if you think the Ajax side as well is like they're in the semi-finals. Those guys are those guys are not that experienced. So they, they're going to be like in a new ball game for them as well. You know, so then you start seeing nerves kick in, you know, and you, they're young side, but like they're going to get nervous, mm -hmm. you know, and when, when, when the crowd is on their back as well, you know, so maybe 3 0, 3 0, ideally 3 0. Martin, okay. you're changing yeah. your mind so quickly. <laughs> Talking about this Ajax side, everyone talks about how young they are, that's fine, but they also have um, some very interesting, very good, experienced players as well. Fideli Blind, one of them, and Dusan Tadic. Yeah. Apart from yeah. Lionel Messi, only um, Dusan Tadic has had a more, uh, you know, involvement in goals and assists in this Champions League. Well, you know, the one thing you, uh, I've, I've said again, you know, everyone took Ajax on like they didn't take it unlikely, really. Mm. And that's the thing. They, 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 they're good. They're a good side. They play well. They got energy. And you, you, definitely, you know, but, nah. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> they're not having it. You look at Tadic, you compare him to Ericsson. Ericsson, it's going to it's better than him, mm. right? Okay. You know, so I, I look at Tadjit as like the guy that played for Southampton. Uh, you know, he's going, to, he's going to Ajax. He's doing well at Ajax, but uh, don't worry, it's, it's not a problem. Okay. You no know, Blaine. So, uh, I remember Blaine from United. You know, so mm. you know, okay. So like, then um, he, he was an ex-United player, my United player. You know, so I remember how he was at United. So he's not. It doesn't. You can't compare him to the likes of Vertonghen and like um, Odebrecht. All right. You know, I'm surprised at that because this guy has scored six goals and three assists, there which he go. has. And the two guys who have actually been responsible for the nine goals Tottenham has scored so far, Harry Kane and Eston, and these guys are not there. Now, who will be able to stop a target? That's a big problem. Well, well stopping target is like, um, hopefully, we're going to have Sissoko back today. He's you back. Know, um, Musa Sissoko? Yes, he's back. Yeah, I mean, he, was tra he trained yesterday, mm -hmm. so most likely he's going to play. You know, so when you have his, his energy there in midfield, and then um, probably maybe um, Daya or Wanyama, yeah, we're going to have a solid midfield mm -hmm. to actually block them. And don't forget, we've got Mora. You know, Mora, he's been explosive. Mm -hmm. He scored a hat-trick against Huddersfield. Beat Huddersfield, but he scores goals. He's going to step in. When you don't have your best players playing, what happens? Everyone steps in. You know, when Hurricane wasn't playing, what happened? Stone stepped in. You know, now Stone is out injured. What's going to happen? Mora is going to step in. Mm. Don't forget, Lorenz is he, he scored like a goal against Dortmund. Mm. Right? He's, so he's, he's, he's a, walk, he's, he's a winner. Mm. You know, so when we've got winners in place, be no winners with Spurs though, but we've got winners in our team. <laughs> All right, Martin, thank you so much for joining us this morning. All the best. You said three goals. We expect that to happen tonight <laughs> because if it's 1 0, 
Ayaz might just come back and you know what they did to Madrid yeah. and Juventus. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thanks a lot. All right, then. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go for a quick break now. We'll come back. We should be listening to uh, Mauricio Pochettino and, of course, the coach of Ayaz, what they have to say concerning the game tonight.